Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Today is going to be the second and the final class for the chapter The Bangle Sellers. In the last class, we have learned that the poem glorifies the idea of Indian womanhood and it revolves around the different women of, of different age and the various colorful bangles that they like to wear in their happy mood. Each stage of an Indian woman's life, from a dreamy maiden to an excited bride and finally to a mature woman, mature wife and a mother is described in this poem according to the various multicolored bangles which are available in different stages of their lives. This is all about the poem. Today what we are going to do is we are going to, this is the picture of Sarojini Naidu. I think all of us um, already can understand that from the picture that this is Sarojini Naidu who is called the Nightingale of India. So what is the work for today? We will be doing the, we will be learning the figures of speech used here. First of all, what is a figure of speech? Whenever we are writing a poem or a prose, we sometimes try to make it more beautiful than the way we normally talk, isn't it? We try to make it, uh, we, we try to use rhyming words or we try to use certain forms of writing so that the poem or the prose is more appealing, isn't it? So first of all, we should know that the poem is a lyric poem. This question is often asked, what kind of a poem is it? The poem is a lyric poem. And when we describe or try to write the poem using certain features to make it, make it sound more appealing or to read more appealingly, we, it is called the figures of speech. There are a number of types of it. So as we read the poem stanza wise, we will know where the figure of speeches are and what kind of figure of speech it is. Let us read the first stanza. We have already described uh, the stanzas in detail in the last video on this chapter. So we will not go into a deeper description of the stanzas or the summary of the stanzas. We will just do the figures of speech used here. First, see what is given? Rhyme scheme. What is a rhyme scheme? Now let us read the poem. See the last word of every line. Line number A, line number B. In these two lines, the last words rhyme. Is it the last word of the first line and the last word of the second line are rhyming with one another, pure and fair. So A, A, this part is clear. Let's move to the next two lines. Let us take it as B. The first one was A, let us take it as B. C, the last word of the third line and the last word of the fourth line also rhymes with one another. So next we see it is B, B. And now we will move on to the last two lines of the first stanza. See the last word of the fifth line and the last word of the sixth line also rhymes with one another. We will take it as C. So over here we see A, A, B, B, C, C. This is the rhyme scheme. What is a rhyme scheme? It is also written in detail. You can read it from here. The rhyme scheme is used to depict or used to point out the vibrant and many colored bangles. The rhyme scheme over here points out the vibrancy or the beauty or the a detailed uh, significance of these colorful bangles. In each stanza, the first line, it happens in every stanza. We have just described the first stanza over here. Even in the second, third and fourth stanzas, we will see the same thing. The first line and the second line, the last words of both the lines rhyme with one another and it goes on same as we see in the first stanza. So the first line rhymes with the second, the third line rhymes with the fourth, the fifth with the sixth. So this is all about the rhyme scheme. Now we will move on to metaphor. First, if a question comes that what is a metaphor? What is, it? what is it? This is a figure of speech where two different things are compared without using like or as. What is important over here is we must mention without. 
this word is very important simile and metaphor both are almost the same type of comparisons only metaphor does not use like or as to compare between two things whereas simile uses like or as to compare between two things for example if i say as beautiful as a rose then this becomes a simile and if i say lion hearted man then it becomes the comparison between a lion between the bravery of a lion and the bravery of a man however we are not comparing the two things using the words like or as so it is a metaphor in this case what is a metaphor see rainbow tinted circles of light it is a comparison between whom we are talking about the bangles we are talking about the multicolored bangles and it is compared to what the various colors of the rainbow these two things are being compared but do we see like or as in this line no there is no use of like or as so this is a metaphor there is another metaphor in the same stanza we see lustrous tokens of radiant lives lustrous tokens of radiant lives this too does not have any use of like or as in in this sentence but there is a comparison comparison between what the bangles are identified as bright lustrous symbols of radiant or happy lives of young girls and women for whom the bangles are made so these bangles are symbols of the happy lives of women all those women who are very happy you know in the village area in indian context in the villages or in the cities women mainly dress in beautiful attires in beautiful jewelry whenever there is a uh, there is an occasion or a festival or something during the pujas during a marriage during a ceremony women wear beautiful dresses and with them they also wear beautiful ornaments like bangles so whenever they are radiant lives that is whenever they are very happy they are rejoicing then they use these symbols what these what are these symbols these are bangles then they wear these bangles so the bangles these bright beautiful bangles are themselves a symbol of what symbol of their happiness they are compared to the happy lives of these young girls and married women okay so this is also a comparison comparison between the happy lives of the women and the bangles okay next there is a color imagery what is a color imagery see throughout the poem we are given beautiful colors of bangles throughout the poem isn't it it refers to words or phrases used to help the readers to form images in the mind beautiful images of various colors very colorful images are created in our brain when we read about all these beautiful colors beautiful flowers of different colors beautiful leaves buds and everything very beautiful a, a sight of beautiful colors is created in our inner mind in our brain so the prominent imagery here is the color imagery why let us see the examples rainbow tinted rainbow is in itself a combination of a huge number of colors isn't it so many colors are there so it creates an impression of colors in the mind and by comparing the bangles with the rainbow what happens is a color imagery or a, or an image of colors is created in our mind we can relate with the rainbow we can feel that in that container of that uh, bangle seller so many different colors of bangles are there just like the colors of a rainbow so it is a color imagery images of colors are used colors are used to symbolize certain things this color of bangles is for young girls this color of bangles is for married girls these bangles are for um, for the middle aged women so color differentiates the the different types of bangles that the women wear in the society okay that's all in the first stanza next we'll move on to the second stanza first again as we have done earlier the rhyme scheme again we are talking about wrist in the first line mist in the second line both of them are rhyming with one another so again the same thing a a then in the third line and the fourth line dream and stream are also rhyming with one another so again the same thing b b and the last two lines see cleaves and leaves these are also rhyming with one another so c c therefore the rhyme scheme which is used to depict the vibrant and many colors of bangles over here is also present in the second stanza where we find that these words in the lines are rhyming with one another 
now we will move to the next one now we have simile this one we already have discussed simile is a type of comparison where we compare between two things using like or as for example as beautiful as a rose where a girl is compared to a rose using the words as the girl is as beautiful as a rose so the beauty of the girl is compared to the beauty of the flower using the word as so if we use like or the word as to compare it is simile the same thing is written over here you can read it from here once figure of speech where two different things are compared using like or as metaphor is just we have to remember that in case of simile we use like or as in case of metaphor we do not use like or as both are comparisons between two different things now it is a poem that runs on a series of comparisons throughout the poem you will see that there are a huge number of comparisons using like or as so all those are simile we will discuss about it over here the first one silver and blue as the mountain mist in the second stanza this is the first example where we see that the silver and the blue color of the mountain mist in the last uh, class we have seen the pictures also picture of the mountain mist which are silver and blue in color so that silver and the blue color of that mountain mist is compared to the silver and blue bangles which are suitable for the young unmarried girls if you are liking the video then please like and subscribe children okay next we will move on to the second example some are flushed like the buds that dream on the tranquil brow of a woodland stream in the same way as we have seen in example 1 in example 1 we see the mountain mist the silver and the blue mountain mist is compared to the silver and blue bangles of the girls in the second example we see that the buds which are growing beside a forest stream over over there all these buds are pinkish in color so that pink color is compared to the pink bangles of the little girls so again we are using like we are using as in this case in the first case and like in the second case so both of them are similes okay next we will move on to the visual imagery in the first stanza we have seen the color imagery over we have over this uh, over in, um, here in the second stanza we find the visual imagery the image of the mountain mist draws our mind into creating an image of foggy hazy mountains so visual imagery is something which has an effect in the mind we we have seen these mountains which is foggy and hazy the silver and blue color of the mountains we have seen it it is there in our mind why is it there in our mind because we have already seen this kind of a mountain whenever we have all of us have gone to mountains isn't it so that image is there in our mind we have seen it so we can recollect that image isn't it from our memory because we have all seen mountains and we can relate better to the color of the bangles because we have already seen such mountains foggy hazy mountains the silver and the blue colored mount the haze of the mountains we can relate we can understand what kind of bangles they are they were silver and the blue color of these mountain mist okay that is why this is a visual imagery it is there in our mind we we can sense it we can feel it as we have already seen the mountain mist that is why it is a visual imagery it has effect on our sight okay next stanza 3 in the stanza 3 again we will see the rhyme scheme it is there everywhere see corn and morn the first two lines are rhyming so a a fire and desire over here it is rhyming also so b b and the last two lines clear and tear so these two are also rhyming so a a b b c c that is why the first stanza has a rhyme scheme the second stanza has the same rhyme scheme third stanza also has the same rhyme scheme what is the rhyme scheme rhyme scheme is a a b b c c now we will move to simile again all through the poem there are a number of similes so here is another one this is a figure of speech this is the same definition everywhere a figure of speech where two different things are compared using like or as it is a poem that runs on a series of comparisons there are a number of comparisons uh, similes that you will find throughout the poem in the second in the third stanza what are the examples some are like fields of sunlit corn i think you all remember from the last class that we uh, we discussed about the bangles that are suitable for 
the women who are going to be married soon so for them we are discussing in the third stanza so these bangles are of what color like the fields of sunlit corn they are bright yellow in color just like the corn fields that glow under the sun so the corn fields glowing under the sun is compared to these yellow bangles which are suitable for the women on her bridal morning that she wears before her before her marriage on the day of her marriage in the morning of her marriage okay very easy example second one some like the flame of her marriage fire so in the first case we have this like so it is a simile and in the second case also we have a like which makes it a simile what is the comparison in the second example the color of the bangles is similar to her marriage fire the marriage fire has a reddish yellow color the reddish yellow flame of the marriage fire is compared to the reddish yellow bangles which is suitable for the women who are going to be married soon so these are the two examples of simile third one we have a new type what is an alliteration alliteration is a very easy figure of speech it is something where we find, we all know what are consonants so a word which is a consonant the word which starts with a consonant can be flower okay can be field so if consonant sounds repeat if there is a close repetition of consonant sounds twice or more than two times in a line if there if in a single line more than two times we repeat the same consonant words for example line number 1 some again in the same line we see sunlit so both s both consonant sounds so this is an alliteration even in the second line we find bride and bridal this is also a repetition of consonant sounds consonant sound b same in the third case flame and fire repetition of consonant sound f next line hue and heart same repetition of consonant sound h third line repetition of consonant sound t tinkling and tender and the last line repetition of b letter that is bridal and bridal okay so all this is alliteration if you are asked to give an example of alliteration any one line can do okay any one you can mention which you are capable of remembering keeping it in your mind just remember one or two line from here that will suffice now we will move to stanza number 4 in stanza number 4 rhyme scheme is common as we have seen in the earlier three stanzas gray midway rhymes so a a blessed and breast rhymes which is bb and pride and side rhymes which is cc so this also has a rhyme scheme and these are all the figures of speech that we have to discuss that that we had to discuss today it is all done and uh, you can if you if you can find out any other figure of speech anywhere or if you can find out alliteration from some other stanzas or you can if you can find out some color imagery or visual imagery from anywhere then throughout the, throughout this poem at least then you can obviously mention it in the comment box thank you so much children please like and subscribe if you like my video